Now we can see we have a gate on the left hand side, we have a solid wall in the middle, then we have our railing tool. So I'm gonna start by drawing a three meter wall right here in the middle and then opening it up in 3D so I can see what's going on. That wall is three meters tall, so let's unlink it, drop that down to 1200 and press OK. While we're there, we can probably also update all of the materials and make that look like concrete, pressing OK. And there we go, we've got our first concrete wall. Next, we're gonna dive back into our ground floor plan, go to our railing tool and open up our rail settings. And to save you all time creating this railing tool, all you need to do is go through and copy all of my settings as what I've got shown now. So first of all, we wanna make sure our railing tool is zero to the ground. Next, we wanna create a very basic object. So you'll see there's only two elements in this scene. They're 1200 high to match our wall. And let's start with the bottom rail. If we select the bottom rail, you'll see it is a 50 by 100 steel tube. And if I slowly scroll through these settings here, you'll be able to copy most of these settings to be able to replicate it for you. I haven't gone through and updated all of the line types so that you can edit to your perfect preferences. But for now, generically, it looks like that. Second item in the list is of course, the balustrade itself, which similar to the bottom rail, is a 100 by 50 steel hollow section. I've got that spaced out at 100 mil increments. And if I pan through it once again, you will see all of my settings so you can duplicate it. You can grab a copy of this project file in the Patreon link down below as well if you wish. Last but not least, of course there's an end post just like there's the inner posts, it matches the inner post identically. So if we press okay, we can now select the middle of this brick wall that we've created, go across and let's type in 12 meters for argument's sake and second click. If we open up our 3D, we'll see we've created a very, very similar picket fence. So looking at this, it's probably a little bit out of proportion. We might wanna reduce that down to eight meters instead of 12 meters. And then we can also run that back eight meters in towards the house. Finally, we can create our gate. Let's go two meters wide, press okay. And I can only assume that this also runs parallel to the opposite side. So now if we look back, we have a three-sided fence line, we have our concrete wall. If you're new here, my name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And on this channel, we talk all things architecture. I wanted to take the quick interlude to make sure you're aware that down in the description is a completely free Discord chat for architects, students, and everybody around the world in the profession. If you're just looking for a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help, there's thousands of people in the Discord group looking to grow and learn just like you and we're ready to start creating the back shape of the house. Now, the shape of this house is incredibly easy to model. If we were doing it for architectural purposes, we would do it with walls and doors. For modeling purposes, we'd do it with slabs. In this instance, I'm gonna teach you the fastest way possible on the lowest floor and then the complicated way on the top floor. So first, let's grab our slab tool. Let's draw a simple slab. So approximately from here to here, we're it looks like we have a nine meter wide slab. It doesn't matter how far back that slab goes. So if we go back into 3D, select that slab, change it to generic, overwrite everything. It looks like that as well is concrete. So we can change it to match the front concrete we've created, lift it higher, and then simply drag it as high as we need to. In this instance, let's have a guess at three meters and leave it there. Now we can replicate that same formula for the entry portico. These walls only look to be about 250 wide, but they do look a good one meter spaced away. So what we wanna do is create our portal feature and duplicate that over, move it across as far as we can. I'm again expecting that it will sit on the fence line itself. I have no idea, honestly, because I only have this one picture to go off. Finish off our portal and then create our top roof section. So you'll see the roof section is obviously way too large. We can reduce that to 250 mil to match everything else, drop our walls down. And in this instance, it actually looks higher. So let's increase that another 1200 millimeters, match our walls and paint the back element black. So now the only other element, architecturally speaking, is the flashing or the capping on top of that. So if we wanted to simply increase that by 50 millimeters, change it to black and reduce the depth, 
we'll have our flashing from the street appearance. Of course, the flashing will sit ever so slightly out. So if we increase that in overall size by 10 millimeters, it will sit over the top of it and flash back down. Now we can go up to our second floor, right click show as trace on our ground floor so we know what we're creating. Go to our wall tool. Again, doesn't really matter what wall tool we're using. We're just using this as an example. We can start significantly further out, but at the same time, we're creating it from the same alignment as the lower floor. So starting in the back left corner, we'll drag it out. Let's make that seven meters. I'm anticipating that's about a three meter cantilever. Run it all the way to the edge, pull it back and leave it there. If we come into 3D, obviously that is way too high up. So let's bring it back down and offset that 500 mil from the lower base because you can see it is floating above the actual building itself. Now, to be able to do that with confidence, obviously there needs to be a wall underneath supporting that in some way, shape or form. So I'm just gonna create that wall there and run it back on both sides. So it is now sitting, but it is also cantilevering. I'm also gonna select the entire building itself on the upper floor, move that back one meter. So the cantilever is still technically three meters but it is only a two meter cantilever over the bottom floor, which is looking a little bit more realistic now. Of course, we need a slab on that floor. We're not really worried about best practice here. It's quick, dirty, nasty, so we can articulate our point. Now, in this instance, we want that to be black, black ivory, press okay. We want our three upper walls and our three lower walls, of course, to be black ivory as well. Now there are two ways we can do this. We can either model individual columns so that we can specifically space out all of this or we can use the CI tools feature. Now obviously CI tools is not available to everybody and it is a paid plugin. So we'll start with the buttons and then we'll move to CI tools. If we come back to our floor plan, we'll go to our column, open up our settings, make a standing seam of nine millimeters by 52 millimeters and make sure it is painted Colbon steel monument. I'm going to use that because I'll use that as the base for the standing seam as well. Simply press once, make sure our standing seam is now located exactly where we need it. And then spread the distance evenly at 320 millimeter centers. If we drag all that through, we can delete our last three. Make sure we group those columns together so that we come in 3D. We can easily select them all drag them to where they need to be, increase their heights, and now we have our standing seam created through modeling. Alternatively, the easier way if you are willing to pay for CI tools is to select all three of those, go to CI tools, wall coverings, wall coverings, go to the ribbed covering settings, change A to 52, change B to nine, change C to nine, change D to 320, and change E to 35. Easiest way, of course, is change that to monument. So everything is identical. Press OK and move them in front. Now, if I go back to my 3D, it's obviously going the wrong way, but we can select our standing seam, 3D cladding, rotate it 90 degrees, press OK. And now we have a very similar standing seam pattern occurring. The downside with this is very, very simple. The standing seam tool only works on the actual walls. You cannot use it for the underside of a slab or wrapping the soffit of this building. Two workarounds, of course. One, we can duplicate it, right click, convert to morph, press okay, and then rotate it 90 degrees. So in that instance, we can simply drag, drop, select, make sure our standing seams are perfectly aligned. And there we go. We now have our standing seams wrapping around the bottom. It is not linked, but that is okay. It is easy to update if we need to. The second option is of course to use the column and beam tool and simply wrap it around underneath to create it. For me, it is so much easier to create using the standing seam CI tools version. So I'm happy to continue with that. Best thing is if you drag and adjust, it will automatically adjust the sizes as well. So we'll lower that back down. Let's make that 3,200 millimeters, zoom back out and quickly create some of our environment. So if we go back to the ground floor, we can grab our mesh tool, drag over, make sure that's grass, okay. And then we can cut in line with the front of the wall so that we split our surfaces and we can cut our footpath and make sure that is a different type of concrete. If we go back to 3D, 
we'll see we have our grass we probably have a little bit of a hedge in front here but overall we've modeled most of the image that we're looking at of course there is a white box next to us which is super super easy to create simple white box duplicate and height and there we go i wanted to thank those of you that are still here with me if you go down into the description you'll find a link to davidtomich.com.au and you'll find one of my best products i've created to date it's an updated version of my construction drawing checklist It'll ensure that you can meticulously document almost any project and make sure you have all of the critical information you need on that page for a set of construction drawings. It has been significantly improved. It has tripled in length since the original version, all because of your incredible feedback. So thank you so much. And because you're still watching this video so late in the game, use the code HVALA50. That's H-V-A-L-A 50 for 50% 50 off anything at davidtomich.com.au. Now, to render this image is going to be incredibly easy thanks to Enscape. First of all, what I want to do is just tidy up some of this section here by introducing a small little planter bed and creating a stucco curved wall to match what they've shown as well. And there we go. Now we have that curved white wall. We have a little bit of the garden. It's probably significantly larger than what it really is on site, but that's okay. Next, we're going to hit Enscape, start Enscape. You see, Enscape makes our life super easy. It automatically populates the grass. It'll introduce all of our elements and it'll almost perfectly match all of the materials that we need. How can we make it better? Well, of course, there's materials, there's textures and the HDRI skies. So let's go into our visual settings. Let's start with our sky, change it to the sky box and use a clear sky adjust our lux levels to suit and then adjust our rotation as well now while we're here we want to go to our main settings we want to ensure our render quality is ultra at the absolute highest if your computer can't handle it you can drop that down to high and it will export of course the best quality we want to adjust our field of view so this is where renders can get really good or really bad we're going to use this as a reference image and we may be able to understand what kind of field of view they had set on their camera. In this case, it most likely looks like it's somewhere around the 85, if not even larger. So let's leave it there. If we move to our image, we can adjust our highlights and our shadows. In this case, it's quite important, of course, because most of our image is shadows. So we really want to emphasize how that image looks on the shadow itself. I like to turn off motion blur, lens flare and vignetting, of course, and bloom. I don't like any of those and chromatic aberration, I don't like any. We want to make sure our, our output is sent to ultra in the resolution so that we can get the best possible exports as well. Now, of course, to make this better, we have to update some of our materials, which means using the Enscape defaults. Change the grass, change the concrete, change the metal, of course, and then update our scene to perfectly suit. There you have it. All we need to do now is hit the export button. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We are so deep into the year already and a long, long way to go. So if you haven't subscribed already, I'd truly appreciate it if you did. If you have any comments, make sure you leave them down below as well. But otherwise, like always, I'll see you next week.